Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. It is April the 26th, 2023. Well, it's hard to believe that we're that far already into the new century. Uh, anyway, I'm sitting here looking at uh, RT's report on Sudan. And uh, as I was listening to their report this morning, and them talking about the issues that are happening <clears throat> over in Sudan, one of the things that it brought to my memory was the uh, the very words of General Wesley Clark. Uh, and mind you, some of these images are disturbing. I apologize. I did not catch that part of the report, so I did not see it. So uh, uh, I want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Uh, <clears throat> we'll put a little thing here at the beginning of the video here so that people know before it airs. Uh, but nonetheless, there, uh, the situation is very dire in Sudan. The deaths are, are rising, both factions fighting against one another. Uh, the West accusing uh, Russia of having the Wagner Group in there. But in reality, they're not fighting against each other. It's both Russia and the United States backing two different sides so that they will clash to overthrow the nation. Because remember, this is part of the Silk Road Initiative. This is the one country that is going to be a major player in the Silk Road Initiative. And so what I wanted to do is to uh, share that with you, but then also bring you back to General Wesley Clark, what he said uh, uh, a little while back here when he was on Democracy Now. Let's listen into this here real quick, just as a reminder. He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said, well, don't show it to me. Now, if you notice what he said there, he mentions Sudan and then finishing off with Iran. Uh, so yes, we are in Sudan now. We are seeing the the collapse of Sudan, and so next it will be Iran. And, uh, and, and, and again, if you look at the Silk Road uh, maps, uh, let me just kind of share that with you. Um, I get the right word in here. I didn't have everything up that I wanted to speak about on this issue here. But if you look at the Silk Road maps here, here's one right here. Uh, you have Somalia there. You have Sudan uh, in the picture here. Now, they're not showing you those countries specifically there, but the Silk Road has to be able to have uh, gain power over all these nations. And of course, a main hub of the Silk Road runs right through Iran. This is why the big issue about taking down Iran. And of course, Sudan down here uh, in, in, in uh, southern or mid central Africa there, that was also important. Uh, and, and, and all these nations, they they're part of the Silk Road Initiative, which is going to be the one, the new one world government area. And this band of this part of the world, by the way, is what's supposed to be able to survive uh, the initial impact uh, of what's going to take place as far as uh, the, the binary system and the effects that it'll have on the earth is supposed to fare out much better. This is one reason why they're already putting the Silk Road together preparing everything and why China is actually taking over the entire region as part of that initiative as well. <clears throat> so it's no wonder why, and if also if you look, uh, there is another map. You know, you'll see uh, one of the parts of the Silk Road runs in towards Moscow, but the rest of Russia, no part of the Silk Road at all. Uh, we do know they're talking about the northern trade route, things like that. But uh, but so then you have to wonder, what, why is the United States, why is Russia, not much of Russia being involved in the Silk Road? Well, look at right here what we have here from TASS News. Risk of direct military clash between Russia and U.S. keep growing foreign ministry, says the Non-Proliferation Arms Control Department Direct Vladimir uh, Yamakov underscored that in order to improve the situation, the U.S. must immediately take concrete steps in de-escalation and, and abolish the hostile course towards undermining Russia's security and practice. <clears throat> and uh, they go on in here, they, they talk about said if the U.S. continues to follow its current course towards standoff with Russia while constantly raising the stakes on the verge of direct military conflict, then the fate of the New START treaty may, may become sealed, uh, Yamark told Tass. However, in the worst case scenario, i.e., Washington drives the uh, situation to a military clash uh, between the strong nuclear powers, and it is not the fate of the New START, but the fate of the entire world 
will be a concern. This once again confirms that the most pressing threat today is connected not with dynamic of stimuli for the first massive strike, which is supposed to be curbed by agreements like the New START, but with danger of nuclear escalation as a result of direct military confrontation between nuclear powers, your Markov explained, and to our deepest regrets, these risks keep growing. Now, I'm going to actually be talking about that over on Patreon today a little deeper uh, from some information I found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and uh, also talk about some other information, maybe from the Egyptian documents as well, because clearly we are seeing the, the uh, fulfillment of different things that were written about this conflict, the, the kings being drunken of the world, going to battle together, all this happening right before Planet X actually comes through. So uh, I think it's something that should be of a concern. And then one other point I want to share with you too as well, is General Wesley Clark, he, he kind of uh, chimes in here on Russia, China. I'd like to play that, that clip for you as well. Listen to this here. Politics of 19th century, each country has its sphere of influence and great powers will joust, argue and fight at the boundaries. We've worked assiduously through two world wars and the Cold War and the post-Cold War to put together a system in which we encourage the peaceful settlement of disputes. We have the United Nations international law. All of that is challenged by Russia and China. It's not possible to choose between are we going to face Russia or are we going to face China? The United States and the West are facing both Russia and China. Both powers disagree with the way the world is structured today. Both powers want to split it apart. They want to go back to an earlier era of power politics, of 19th century. Each country has its sphere of influence and great powers will joust, argue and fight at the boundaries. There you have it right there from General Wesley Clark, what he is seeing this going on, and, and uh, which is interesting because he's saying both Russia and China become that threat. And this is exactly what they want to bring out. They want to bring out this type of threat. This is why Sudan is in the chaos it's in right now. This is why we're seeing the things that we are seeing in regards to Sudan, uh, that, that conflict. And, and clearly, like I said, both countries, they know, they work together. They realize that they're creating the unrest that's happening in this country. And as usual, and as always, it is the innocent that die at the, at the behest of those in power who decide who goes to war with who and why, when, and where. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening in. Shouldn't have gone to there yet, but anyway, thank you for listening. Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live.